All right, Pene Sewell film breakdown. Let's just jump into the film. That's what we're going to do. So we're going to start off with this play. This is what Sewell does really well. So he's going to be a left tackle here. We'll, we'll show some right tackle as well. I think the whole left tackle, right tackle stuff is overblown personally. But uh, his left tackle, he's going to get up to the second level. And this is what Sewell did so well in college and what he does well at the NFL level as well. So again, you're going to double team the interior defensive lineman. Try to get that guy out of the way. And first, notice how well he does, how good of a job he's going to do at that. I mean, watch how that 49ers player, okay, you're just gone. You're out of the way. And he still gets in position to block the linebacker. And look at the hand placement. It's exactly where he wants to put it. This is an incredible play. And this is just straight up clearing out a running lane for his halfback to be able to get through. As you see, he finishes off that block well. The halfback does get through. Just a really good play by Sewell, and it felt like in the running game especially, he was fantastic at this stuff. You could really just see it. It just jumps out on film how consistently he was able to pull this stuff off, and obviously it helps you when you can have someone like that uh, who can you know, be a great tackle, but also you can run a running play through as well, where a lot of teams try to do that through a guard, well, if you can do it through a tackle, that just gives you an extra, an extra option. Like, this one's going to be another one, where this is just going to be a straight-up double team right here. I think maybe the guard was supposed to get up and block a linebacker as well, but Sewell's job here is simply to help block 95, the player who I have in that uh, baseman diamond-esque uh, configuration you see on the screen. Sewell is the, the left tackle, so he's the one who I have circled in yellow. So look, as you see, they both, uh, you know, engage in the contact right here, and really just watch how far 95 is going to get pushed backwards. I mean, look at how Sewell is just able to, you know, just dominate there, and he wins that uh, block. Uh, it is able to, again, do a good job. So he's someone who is really going to help you in the running game. That's just absolutely true and he did a great job with that in Detroit I thought in his rookie season but also like in the pass blocking game something like this he's going up against another you know young very talented player in Nick Boza uh, and watch what he's going to do here so again it's just a true one-on-one -on -one matchup they're letting Sewell block Boza one-on-one -on -one, uh, in Sewell's first game so they clearly trust him and as you see look at how Sewell gets over and look at how he gets the hand placement he wants right away he's able to grab onto, you know, you can only really see his right hand from this angle, but both his hands are right kind of on the, uh, the, the chest area of Boza in a way where Boza just isn't going to be able to do much right here unless he can overpower Sewell, which is something you could try. But as you see, it just doesn't really work. And eventually Boza tries sort of a rip move. That didn't work either. And Sewell was able to do a great job of just not allowing much of anything there. So just a really good play, again, from Panay Sewell, who can do this kind of stuff consistently. One more play I want to talk about. So let's talk about him as a right tackle. Uh, first, we should just talk about the right tackle and left tackle stuff in general for a second. I thought the whole thing was definitely overblown. So Sewell didn't have a great preseason, but also like Okay, first off, it's preseason. Uh, you know, one comparison I've made that I always sticks with me is uh, there was a, a year where Zach Grinke, who was a pitcher uh, in, the, in the MLB, in baseball, who he had one spring training where he was just getting rocked. He, his ERA was horrible. All his statistics were terrible. He was giving up home runs left and right. But the reason for it that we later found out was he was trying a new pitch. And in trying this new pitch, he was essentially just seeing how it was going to work and how it wasn't going to work. So then when he actually started the regular season, he had a full understanding of how that new pitch was going to work. And because of that, he now was actually even better the following season because he had this added benefit. Even though the spring training was horrible, it was horrible for a reason. Now, I don't know if that's the case with Sewell. He might have just been bad. But also, it's like, okay, he gave up a sack to Gregory Rousseau where his quarterback didn't help him out too much. Like, I'm not going to hurt him. I'm not going to get too mad at Sewell for that. In small sample sizes, weird things happen as well. When I saw him play right tackle, I did not see much of an issue. I did not think he was worse at right tackle at the NFL level than he was at left tackle. And this is an example where you see who he's going to block and watch what happens. As you see, he gets over and he gets his left arm to where he needs to be right away. So especially in the running game, there was real no real issue. And again, I wanted to show a play like this where you have to see his him get his hands over because this is the exact opposite of how you would do it if he's a left tackle. So you'd have to use his right hand in that play, but he can use either hand pretty well. As you see, watch him turn over and he is able to, you know, finish off that block. I, he was good as a right tackle last year. Like, he, he was. Like, this was not a bad 
a, he was not bad at the right tackle position last year. I think that all that stuff, it just, uh, you know, it's a narrative. I didn't really think it was the case from what I saw. If he just had a bad preseason where he was a right tackle, but I don't know if that was because he was a right tackle necessarily. It's an interesting theory. It might be the case, but I just don't know. And also, I wanted to show some college stats for a second, just this last little part, which is just so absurdly crazy, is in 2019, when he was 19 years old, he posted a PFF uh, offensive grade at as 95.8. That's absolutely absurd. And not just that, but he did that while being a physical freak as well. So this is the kind of prospect we're dealing with. Keep in mind, he didn't play in 2020. So part of maybe his bad preseason was it was just his first time like playing actual football again. And he, you know, took him a little bit longer to get going. But I wanted to post these stats just because it reminded me like, oh yeah, this guy was like absurd in 2019. He was really good. Uh, and again, PFF grade is something that translates to the NFL level pretty well. So yeah, I mean, listen, at the end of the day, it was reasonable to suggest that there might be some growing pains with Panay Sewell in general, right? We haven't seen him play in a year and he is just young. So like the fact that he was so good in 2019 was just like absurd. And that's why he was, you know, considered this not just great prospect, but this generational talent and Panay Sewell would have probably gone first overall if he was in this draft in fact I think he at least would have, I mean who knows what Jacksonville would do right but like he would be the uh, favorite uh, to go first overall in this draft uh, I think he would be the consensus number one overall pick in this draft had he come out in this draft so that's what's fascinating about him and you know the I you know, the Lions got two of those guys because they got the guy who was the consensus uh, first overall pick uh, in this draft uh, who went number two, of course. Um, I think with Sewell, again, I really don't think that the negatives are really that big of negatives. Like, his numbers were good. His tape was good. I mean, his tape at times, like, the fact that he's his size and can move the way he can is just, like, that shouldn't be allowed. That should be against the rules of football. The fact that he can do that is, it still blows me away. And I, I liked what I saw from him his rookie year. Like, to me, he met my expectations year one. Like, okay, no, he didn't come in. He wasn't Trent Williams day one. Uh, like, what do you expect from these guys? They, I wasn't expecting him to be Trent Williams from day one. Was he really good, though? Yeah, he was really good. And I think he's someone who, in my opinion, showed that he can really play and he's going to have a good career even at right tackle. Again, you could argue it's a little bit weird. Why do you draft someone because of their tape at left tackle and then have them play right tackle? But it seems like usually when these guys do shift around, they're typically pretty good at it. And again, other than that, you know, a couple of concerning preseason plays, which it sounds silly to think now, like that's the, remember when Jamar Chase was a bust because he kept dropping passes and uh, Sewell gave up a couple of sacks in the preseason. And so he was a bust too. Maybe we overreact the preseason a little bit. Maybe that's the lesson. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.